How's it going guys? In today's lesson we're going to be going over how we can create a Discord bot using Python and we're going to add a lot of cool features to this but mostly it's going to be able to respond to you in the current channel and via private messaging. So it's going to look like this. As you can see we already have a sample chat here so if you type in something such as hello you're going to have your bot responding to hello. Otherwise, you can add some added functionality, such as if you type in roll, it's going to roll a random dice and it's going to give us a random response, such as five, six, three, and it's going to be using Python to generate those responses. So of course you can add any kind of response you like and it can even help with moderating your chats. And we also have the option to ask for help, for example, and there you can add your options, you can add whatever you want there so that the users can play around with that. Now I also decided to go ahead and add a cool feature such as direct messaging. So in case you don't want them to respond directly inside this chat, you can go ahead and add a question mark or any symbol you want in front of the command. And when you type it, you're going to get a chat bubble from the bot directly. And this also works for other messages such as hello, and it's going to add it in our own personal chat. And of course, if you want to continue speaking with the chatbot, you can continue inside here and it's going to work just as before. You can say roll, you can say hey there, and you can add your own commands. So that's what I'm going to be showing you how to create in today's lesson. And to get started, you want to go ahead and open up this web page over here, which is discord.com developers slash applications. And I'll leave that link in the description box down below so you can just click on it. And what we have to do inside here is tap on new application and we can call this whatever we want and I want to call it Mario bot and click on create. Now the first thing I like to do with bots is give it a nice icon. So I'm going to go to downloads and just give it this picture over here and that's going to be the bot. And of course it's good to add a description which is going to appear in the about me section. I am a test bot. I do lots of things and you should also add what it does. And here I'm just going to type in chat and chatbot. And this part here is just for customizing. So definitely remember to save your changes. And as soon as you've done that, we can go ahead and tap on the OAuth2. And inside here, you want to go ahead and create the authorization link. So first we need to go ahead and pick in-app authorization. And down here, we're going to tap on bot. And we also need to select the bot permissions. And the bot permissions should be anything you want to use. So I'm going to just pick mostly the text permissions. I wouldn't recommend ever giving a bot administrator permissions, but we want our bot to be able to do this stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on all of them. And we also wanted to moderate members. So I'll tap on that. And just like that, we can go ahead and save these changes. And with that being done, let's go ahead and generate the URL generator. So inside here, we need to go ahead and tap on bot and we need to reselect these permissions once again. So this part here is going to create the link that we need to invite the bot to our server. So reselect the same permissions and you're gonna get a link down here that you should just go ahead and copy. And I recommend just saving this somewhere safe, such as in a note file. As you can see, now we have this invite link that we can use at any time to invite the bot to our server. Now there's only one last thing you have to do and that is go to build a bot and click on add the bot and say, yes, you want to do it. This is going to help you get the actual authorization key, which is the token. So here you need to go ahead and click on reset token and say, yes, do it because it's going to generate for you this token over here. Now this is unique. You shouldn't share it with anybody, but once you get this token, go ahead and just paste it in a place that you can remember it, if not directly in your Python file. And this will just take care of everything we need to make our bot function. So now that we have that up and running, we can go ahead and close this web page and get started in PyCharm. So once you've gone ahead and created a new Python project, go ahead and open up the terminal and type in pip install discord. And this will give us all of the files necessary for actually creating the bot. It's just one simple import and you can close that. Now go ahead and remove all of this placeholder and just replace it with the default if name is equal to main. And here we just want to run the bot. And for now, we're just going to type in pass. So this is the only functionality we're going to have in main. Next, go ahead and create a new Python file, which is going to be called bot. And we also want to create a new file, which is called responses. And we're just going to go ahead and get the responses out of the way first. So first we want to go ahead 
and create a function called handle underscore response. And this will be the logic you use to return a response of your choice. So however you decide to handle this is up to you, but I'll show you how I created these sample messages. So first we're going to get a message and we want to process this message. So usually you want to split it and turn it into something that you can actually use. So for this example, I will refer to the message and just lowercase it. So now it doesn't matter what kind of case the user uses, we can always process it in lowercase. So if the P message is equal to hello, then we're just going to return hey there. If the P message is equal to roll, then we're going to return the string of random dot random int, and it's going to be between one and six. And we need to import random for this. So import random, and this should be a lowercase i. And it's very important you guys remember that Python is case sensitive. So any letter that is uppercase is going to be different than the lowercase version. So make sure everything is exactly the same as you see it written in this program. Finally, down here, we need to go ahead and compare p message to the command of help. So here we can return, and I'm just going to copy and paste what I had from earlier. We're going to return this message over here. And you're going to notice that it also has these backward ticks, which you can go ahead and copy from the internet. It's used to specify a code section in this code. So I don't know how to find this on my keyboard, so I just went ahead and copied it. And of course, you can also go ahead and return a default message. If nothing works, you can go ahead and return, I don't know what you said. And this will always be triggered at all times if the bot does not understand anything. But I don't recommend doing that because sometimes you don't want the bot to respond for no reason. But that's going to take care of the responses section. Now we can go to the bot section. And inside the bot section, we want to go ahead and import Discord and import responses. Now the first function we want to create is an async function, which is going to send the message either to the current channel or to the user in specific. So here we're going to get an instance of the message and we also want to process the user message. Plus we want to check whether it's private or not. If it's private, we're going to send it to the user directly. Otherwise it will be, otherwise it will be returned inside the current channel. So inside here, we're going to create a try and catch block. So first we want to get the response, which will be taken from the responses dot handle response. And we're going to insert the user message. So that's going to be the response we return to the user. Then we can go ahead and call await message dot author and we want to send the response if and let's close the sidebar so if it is private we will send it to the author directly otherwise we need to call await again and send it just in the current channel which is going to be the same thing except with the response again so this is all the logic we need to specify whether we want to send it in the channel or as a private message. And if anything goes wrong for any reason, we're going to accept this exception as E, and we're going to go ahead and print this exception. Now let's go ahead and create a function that's called run discord bot. So def run underscore discord underscore bot. And inside here, first we want to get our token, which is going to equal the token we just created. So go ahead and find that and copy it. So for me, it's going to be this one over here and I'll paste it just inside there. Then we need to go ahead and create a client, which is going to equal a discord dot uppercase client. Now let's go ahead and make some space. So under the client, we're going to create a client event. So at client dot event, and this is going to be an async definition on ready. So this is when the bot actually gets started. It's going to call on ready. And here we're just going to print a formatted string that the client dot user is now running. And this just tells us that our bot is up and ready. And right below this, we're going to go ahead and test it out by calling client dot run. And inside here, you need to insert the token. So let's go ahead and make sure we set up everything correctly. And the way we can do this is first by going to our notes and inviting the bot to our server. So go ahead and copy the link we created earlier and then open up a tab and just paste it in there. Then it's going to ask you, do you want to add MarioBot to your server? Pick a server. I'm going to add it to my current server and I'm going to say it's okay for all of this and authorize it. Then you need to specify that you're a human and it's going to say it was authorized. 
And magically enough, when you go to your Discord server, you're going to notice that as soon as we go to a public server such as this, we're going to have Mario bots joining the server. And now if we actually go back to our PyCharm project and go to main, all we have to do inside here is import the bot, and then we can go ahead and call bots.run discord bot and click on this green arrow. Then down here, you should see a message saying that Mario bot is now running. And if we go to our discord file, you're going to see Mario bot is now online. And this is the behavior we're looking for. But there is one problem at the moment, and that is that Mario bot is not going to respond to any messages. So we need to close this code temporarily. And let's also fix this typo because it says is no running. So here we'll go ahead and type in now running and add the code for the responses. So let's go ahead and create another client event. So here we can go ahead and type in at client dot event and below that async def on message. And inside here we insert the message. So first we need to make sure that the message dot author is equal to the client dot user and then return. And this just prevents us having endless loops. For example, if a user types hello and the bot returns hello, you don't want to have it in an endless loop of hello because that's going to be an infinite loop. You want to make sure that the message comes from someone else. So whatever the bot says is not going to be used as a response. After this, we need to go ahead and get some basic information such as the username that wrote the message. So message.author and then we can go user message is going to equal the string of the user or the message dot contents. And finally, we want to get the channel it was written in. So here we can type in string of message dot channel. And just for debugging, I'm going to go ahead and copy this line of code and paste it right here. So I'm going to print that the username said this in this current channel. And you can write it in any form you like. I just use this for debugging so we can see what happens when users interact with the bot. Now we're actually really close to finishing. We just have one more line of code to write. And that's if the user message at the index of zero is equal to a question mark. And you can actually make this any symbol you want. It can be a percent sign. It can be an exclamation mark. But if it is equal to the question mark, I want to make sure it sends private messages. So here we're going to type in user message is going to equal user message. And we want to get rid of the question mark so the bot can understand what it is. So we're going to add the one and the colon, which means it's going to exclude the first character, which is a question mark, and it's going to process the rest of the message. So here we can go ahead and type in await send message, and the message is going to be set to the message. The user message will be the user message, and is private will be set to true. Else we're going to do the exact same thing. So you can just go ahead and copy this line, paste it under, but set is private to false. So just like that, we've gone ahead and added all the functionality required to make this bot respond to messages. So now let's go ahead and rerun the program. And if everything's working perfectly, you should have Mario bot running in the console. Then let's go to our discord server and pick a random chat such as this one here. And we can say hello, and we're going to have Mario bot there. We can tell Mario bot to roll and it's going to roll a dice. We can also say roll with a question mark and it's going to send us a private message up here. And we can also privately chat with MarioBot. So we can say hello, and MarioBot's going to respond, or else we can go ahead and say help. And it's going to give us some help over there. Now, if we go back to our PyCharm project, you will notice that we'll also get all of these logs so we can see exactly what's happening. And we can close the console. And yeah, that's essentially all we need to do to create a Discord bot. And if you want to add more messages, just go ahead and add it inside handle response, return what you want to return, add whatever functions you want inside here, and you can really take this to the next level. But for getting started, that's actually everything you need to know for creating a very efficient Discord bot. So have fun with it. And with that being said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.